On today's video, we are going to talk about what I believe is hands down the best bluegill bait ever. Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And you know, like I said earlier, we are going to talk about what I believe is the best bait for bluegills ever. Now I know earthworms have probably caught more bluegills than any other bait out there, but I don't believe that they are the best bait for bluegills at least for open water fishing. And, and that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the best bait for open water bluegill fishing. To me, the best bait ever for bluegills is a leech, specifically a ribbon leech. I remember the first time that I ever fished with leeches. I was about 10 years old. Me and my family were down in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, visiting my grandparents. And my grandpa Knetter had got this hot fishing tip uh, some guy was telling him at the paper mill that they were getting these big bluegills on this lake just kind of outside of town and they were catching them on leeches. And none of us had ever fished with leeches before, but we went down to the bait shop, got some leeches, and went out to this lake and kind of tried them for the first time. And I'll tell you what, I was very impressed with using leeches for bait. We did get some nice bluegills that day. We also caught a lot of bass. I remember I even caught a small muskie that day. And I know from that day on, me and my dad always kind of kept leeches as part of our fishing repertoire. You know, almost really no matter what we were going fishing for, we pretty much tried to make it a point to always have some leeches with us. So, how do you fish leeches? Well, for bluegills, any kind of rig or setup that you would use a worm, you can just replace it with a leech. 99% of the time when I'm fishing for bluegills with leeches, I'm fishing them under a float. And the specifics of that rig kind of depends on a few things, okay? First of all, if my intentions are just to target bluegills, I will buy the leeches that are a little bit on the smaller size. Leeches that are maybe three quarters of an inch to maybe an inch and a half long. Sometimes I've actually bought leeches that were too small, okay? So you, you kind of got to look at them. I've gone into bait shops before and got the small leeches and they were almost too small. They were like, you know, less than three quarters of an inch long, uh, more on the side of a half inch long. And you really just don't get the wiggle out of something that short, you know, once you put it on the hook. So you kind of got to take a look at them. Sometimes what bait shops consider a medium leech is the size I want for bluegills. Sometimes it's the small. You're just going to have to kind of check them out for yourself. Next, again, if I am just targeting bluegills, I like to use like a size six or eight Aberdeen hook. Okay, you got that uh, nice long shank on an Aberdeen hook. That longer shank uh, makes it a lot easier to get the hook out of a bluegill's mouth, right? They got that small mouth. So it's nice to have that little extra length in the shank. It gives you something to grab, get that hook out of a bluegill's mouth. And the line would be just like any other bluegill rig. You know, four to six pound test mono works great. Um, you know, a lot of times I'm fishing clear water, so I like to usually go with maybe a four to six pound test uh, fluorocarbon leader. Then add a couple split shot and a matching float or bobber. And by a matching float or bobber, I just mean coordinate the amount of sinkers you have with the size of your bobber. You know, match those up so it doesn't take very much pull from that bluegill to bring that bobber underneath the surface of the water. And just real quick, we'll just kind of go over some bobber basics. This is kind of your most basic setup right here. This is just a clip-on bobber, 
all right I just got it clipped right onto the monofilament couple sinkers and my Aberdeen hook and this is a real basic setup this this sort of setup has just caught a bajillion bluegill I'm sure through the course of history real simple works great um, when you're fishing for fish that are probably in four feet of water to less than four feet of water okay now if you're getting into where you're fishing uh, a little deeper than four feet you know anything beyond that uh, it can be a little bit harder to cast with a clip-on bobber so that's when I'll switch up and go to a slip bobber and again just your basic slip bobber rig you know you got a bobber stop you got a bead you got a slip bobber slides along that stop you can move up and down the line get it to any depth you want and in this particular setup I got my split shot I do have a swivel and then I do have my floral carbon leader here okay and then the hook and if any of you guys have any questions about slip bobber fishing um, I do have a playlist at my channel I have a few videos that I did on slip bobber fishing um, I will leave a link to that playlist in the description below so you can check that out if you want okay so earlier in the video I talked about how worms are an excellent bait for bluegills but I actually believe that leeches are better so why are leeches better and I know a lot of you guys out there are saying well you know leeches might be good and all but they're kind of expensive you know for the cost of a dozen leeches I can go out and I can get three dozen worms well there's certainly truth to that but I do kind of believe a lot of times you can catch just as many bluegills on a dozen leeches as you can three dozen worms worms do kind of get picked off the hook maybe a little easier than leeches and you know and, and even if they don't you know if leeches actually work better you know to me it, it's kind of worth the extra cost now since we're on the subject of fish picking bait off your hook let's talk about how to hook a leech probably the best way to hook a leech is you take the leech in your hand and you find the bigger end or the bigger sucker. Leeches kind of have a sucker on both ends, but one's a little bigger, you know, one end's a little fatter, and that's the end you want to find. And take your hook and put it through the leech one time, just below that bigger end, that bigger sucker. The bigger end of a leech is actually its tail. So if you can imagine, you know, a leech being hooked by its tail, it's probably going to sit there, you know, and try to swim away from that hook all the time. So it seems like that's probably the, the best way to hook them to get the most action. Now, the next thing you should do after you hook your leech is just set it down in the water for a second and take a look at it, okay? And the first thing it should do, as soon as it hits the water, it should start swimming, okay? But every once in a while, you will get a rogue leech, and all they want to do is just ball up, curl up on that hook. They don't swim, they're just sitting there all curled up on the hook, they twist, they turn. I've actually had them tie my line in knots before, okay? And it's been my experience when that happens, the best thing you can do is take that leech off and move on to a new leech, okay? Those, those rogue, rebellious leeches, they just don't seem like they can be rehabilitated, so the best thing you can do is to move on to a new leech. Now, although leeches do stay on the hook pretty good, Every once in a while you might find yourself fishing for bluegills where there's quite a few small bluegills around, okay? You're getting little bumps, you're getting little bites, you're going to set the hook, you're not coming up with anything, you reel in, and your leech is gone. When that starts happening to me with a little bit of consistency, sometimes I will double hook the leech. I'll run that hook one more time through the leech. It does diminish the action of the leech, but I still believe that even a double hooked leech has a lot more action than a worm. So I, I still view that as, as a better option or a better bait than worms. And once a leech is double hooked, they are on the hook really good then. It's pretty difficult for even small bluegills to rob you. Now, I know some of you guys out there that have never fished with leeches are gonna be a little squirmish about handling leeches, okay? You know, because they will stick to you, okay? They will use their suckers and they will stick to you it's you know it's going to be totally temporary right because you're just going to hook them and you're going to cast them out so it's not an issue in fact when they do stick to you it actually makes it easier to get the hooks in them all right and you know i'll tell you if my youngest daughter 
will sit in the boat and just play with leeches. You guys should be able to pick one up and put it on a hook, right? So guys, just you know, if you are a little squirmish about using leeches, just, just get over it because they are going to catch you more fish. Another reason that I think leeches are just a fantastic bait is that leeches are a predator. Leeches are a carnivore, okay? So leeches hunt for their food, and sometimes that food is fish eggs. So bluegills and other fish are kind of programmed to be intolerant toward leeches, especially when it's around their spawning seasons. So not only do bluegills view leeches as food, they also view them as a threat, and they can be very aggressive toward them sometimes. Now, I mentioned those other fish, okay, and this is another benefit of fishing with leeches. You know, even though you might be out fishing with leeches, targeting bluegills, you have an excellent chance of catching just about anything that swims in the lake you're fishing. I personally have caught a lot of different fish on leeches. I've caught suckers, carp, bullheads, perch, bass, crappies, walleyes, pike, and even that muskie I mentioned earlier. And, you know, I actually have caught my personal best walleye on a leech, my personal best bass on a leech, my personal best crappie on a leech, and far and away I've caught the majority of my big bluegills on leeches too. Now, if I'm out bluegill fishing with leeches, and I feel like there's a chance I might run into a decent bass or a decent walleye, I might upgrade the rig a little bit, I might beef it up just a little bit. Um, oftentimes when I'm in that situation, I'll swap out that Aberdeen hook, and I'll go with something with a little stiffness to it, you know, uh, maybe like a Gamakatsu walleye wide gap hook. These work really good. You know, I'll go with like a size 2, 4, 6, something like that. And then uh, I'll also upgrade the line a little bit, right? If I was using like a 4 pound test fluorocarbon leader for the bluegills, I might upgrade that to like a 8 or a 10 uh, pound test fluorocarbon leader. You know, something where you can set the hooks a little better, something that might fend off a few small pike from biting you off. And also in that situation, I might go with slightly bigger leeches. Even though I'm maybe targeting bluegills specifically, um, you know, if there's nice bluegills in the area, they can definitely handle a bigger leech. But then you've also got that option where, hey, that might attract a bass or a walleye over. And, and that's always fun to have a few of those mixed in too. Okay, guys, if you've never used leeches before for bluegills, go out and get some and give it a try. I think you might be pretty impressed at how well they catch bluegills. All right. And then all those bonus fish we talked about too, all right? If you've got bass swimming in the area, if you've got walleye swimming in the area, you're going to catch those too. And hey, listen, if you're kind of worried about being squeamish, just get over it, okay? Because you're going to catch more fish, all right? They stick to you for a second. It's no big deal. You get used to it. Just move on, all right? And also, remember to hunt fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.